core of a project is the journey from starting up a project to closing a project. Even at a summary level, there is much to cover, so we will do this in three bytes. The first two will cover the setup and execution of a well-behaved project, and the third will cover the exception handling arrangements. The start point of every project is a mandate produced by some members of either the corporate or the program management. It will be produced by members of corporate management for freestanding projects and by members of program management for projects grouped for program strategic benefits. The mandate may be in the form of, for example, a corridor chat or it may be a document. It might be at the level of I have an idea that we need to talk about, or it might be so fully researched as to remove the need for any starting up a project activity and possibly even the initiation stage. The mandate is the triggering input. The official manual says that since it is created before PRINCE2 is in use, its content and format are undefined. Whatever and however it triggers the project, it must as a minimum be capable of allowing those involved to appoint the project executive and the project manager. It must also support exec and project manager to start to engage a team appropriate to the results required. The desired results and the intended approach to achieve them are described in as much detail is as compatible with being swift and cheap while we don't yet know how well this idea stacks up. The results of SU's six activities is a team and a plan for the initiation stage. The initiation stage enables the project board to answer the question, is it OK to go ahead and prepare the description of the project's business justification? We estimate it will take this much effort, this much time, to properly answer how attractive and achievable are the project's objectives and desired outcomes. The question is asked at Directing a Project Activity, Authorise Initiation. That's Chapter 13, Section 4, Activity 1, or 1341, or DP1. If approved, the initiation stage starts. The first action of the initiation process within the initiation stage is the four activities to create the strategies for risk, configuration management, quality, and communications. And the fifth activity creates the project controls. In many projects, this will be by adopting the organization's standard approaches and so will not represent a lot of work. We know from SU's work what we are to produce and the approach we will take. When we add the control regime to be imposed, we should be able to create a project plan and express the entire, if perhaps only high level schedule and budget within it. PRINCE2 project plan is a mandatory plan aimed at communicating with the project board the dates on which results will be delivered. That is the stage plan, always created for specialist stages by the activities of managing a stage boundary. Stage boundaries also reports on conduct of the stage just closing. Armed with the project plan, we have details of the project's timescales and costs with which we can update the outline business case that came from starting up a project. When we have the strategies, the controls, the plan, the stage report and the next stage plan, then we can provide this information to the project board to decide if first the project is viable, based on the project initiation document or PID, which is described in Appendix A20 of the official manual. And secondly, we can decide if the stage plan is sufficient to authorise the upcoming stage. Let's pause there and then come back to consider how a stage is executed.